I'm Dr. Danielle Albritton, and today we're going to talk about summer safety. This is sort of a lighthearted thing, and it's nice being the beginning of summer, especially since it's so hot. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about today. Heat safety, water safety, summer car, home, and recreational safety. And at the end, as Brenda said, we can, uh, during Q&A, bring up other items. Okay, so what is a heat-related illness? It's basically a range of disorders that result when the body is exposed to too much heat. So who is at risk? As you can see, infants obviously are children under the age of four, seniors, people who work outside, and people with physical conditions such as uh, hypertension, diabetes, things like that. Okay, so one of the first elements is dehydration. We tend to feel that often, even in the winter. It can be a flushed face, dry, warm skin. Uh, your urine will be very concentrated and minimal. Uh, you might feel a little uh, fatigued and uneasy. Um, this happens to uh, when you, you feel thirsty. You shouldn't ever get to the point of being thirsty. Heat cramps will happen in the abdomen and legs and arms. And you can get exhaustion where it proceeds further into vomiting, uh, severe pain, and potentially unconsciousness. You could pass out. And then, of course, you probably heard of heat stroke. Uh, this often happens in our athletes, like the uh, Buccaneers or even the uh, student athletes out there at the middle high school level. They could get a temperature going up to 104. They get very short of breath. They get a seizure, vomiting, and passing out again. And that's a medical emergency. So basically, you want to avoid strenuous activity between uh, 10 and 2 because that's our highest uh, heat index at that point. You should wear loose-fitting clothes, light, light color clothing, and lightweight. Staying indoors is the best thing to do at that time period and being aware of your heat index. And just a little bit more on the uh, clothing. You've probably seen out in the stores now. There's a lot of clothing that has SPF built into it. And also that's dry fit or dry wicking. It'll uh, pull moisture away from your body and evaporate it easier. And then also now they're coming out with cool zone clothes, which make you feel cooler. When the sweat hits the lining of the clothes, somehow it makes your skin feel like it's uh, cooler than it is. So there's some nice new technology out there. Heat index, you probably hear this a lot on the news when you're watching the morning reports. And it, it's basically heat and humidity, which is very common and an issue here in Florida, as you know. If you're up in higher elevations where it's less humid, you won't have this problem. So this is a busy graph, but you can sort of just see uh, the temperature for the day. And then you'll get the, from the weather station the humidity report, and you can see what the feel-like temperature will be. So generally, if you're uh, greater than 50% humidity, you're going to be warmer than what the actual temperature is. So it's very important to note that for the day. So what you want to do when it's so hot, like now uh, with the temperature, the heat index is up for 90s, is take frequent water breaks. And if you're outdoors or very active, you actually want to drink water every 20 minutes. I know, I don't think many of us do that. I know I don't. So it's very important to do that. And if you're athletic and outdoors a lot, to do an electrolyte-based supplements such as the Gatorades, things like that. And uh, for those diabetics now, there's obviously the low sugar or no sugar like Propel or uh, I think there's a light version of Gatorade. And avoid alcohol and caffeinated drinks. So obviously a lot of us have coffee or teas. You have to be careful that will dehydrate you. And then often people when they're mowing the lawn uh, or watching activities outdoors will drink a beer. And again, that dehydrates you. I'm not saying not to do it at all, but just be aware that those items dehydrate and that you'll want to drink more water to compensate. Sun safety. So a lot of this uh, you may already know, but skin cancer is the most common form of skin cancer. And that over a million uh, Americans are diagnosed per year and up to 10,000 die per year of skin cancer. Um, some people think that it's usually just uh, a benign problem. But uh, sometimes uh, you can get like the melanomas and even the basal net that will progress onward. So this is the statistics, but one in 75 individuals may develop melanoma in her, or his lifetime. And this is becoming more prevalent, actually. And the American uh, Cancer Society predicts that 8% of all cancers can be prevented by sun protection. 
unfortunately, because we have so much information now, um, a lot of you have grandkids or great-grandkids here in the audience. So most of their mothers know about uh, sun protection, avoiding peak sun, applying the sunscreen, trying not to be outdoors too much during the day. Uh, when we were little, we didn't know those things, and I'm sure a lot of you can attest to using tin foil to tan or using <laughs> oils to tan. So, um, such as with smoking, I won't touch on it much today, but uh, you know, we thought smoking was fine when it first, you know, in the 40s to 60s, but then we found out nope, it causes cancer. So, you want to wear a minimum an SPF 15, preferably would be 30. Now, they've investigated the SPF in detail, and they found out that above 30, 40, 45, you don't need to go higher. SPFs of 50 and higher really do not give you much more protection. Uh, it, 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 it exponential for a while, and then it plateaus as far as protection. So anything over 50, you don't have to get. It's not going to provide you more protection. But if it's on sale and, or you have it, it's nice to have, but it's not, not necessary. It, it just basically you want a 30 would do it. And you make sure it has UVA and UVB protection. Almost all of the sunscreens now do have them, but in case you find an off-brand or a generic that's real cheap, just confirm that it protects against both wavelengths because both can cause cancer. And then obviously, but it happens to all of us, if you're out sweating or swimming, you want to reapply. So that could be quite often, probably about every hour, hour and a half, actually. And then also when you're out in the sun, be careful with certain medications. So some of your acne medicines, your blood pressure medicines, it'll say on the bottle or on your package insert about being careful in the sun. Um, even with sunscreen, you still want to avoid the sun because the medication will make you more sensitive to burning or having a rash from the sun. Also get sunglasses that block both UV rays. Again, the same thing as sunscreen. You can buy very cheap sunglasses. Just be careful. Make sure they say... Uh, UV A and B, and uh, usually if you see 100%, that would be wonderful to buy. And then to wear lightweight pants, again, as we mentioned before, to give that protection. Um, actually, surprisingly enough, uh, you, you know, you see a lot of people in the pool or ocean wearing a white T-shirt. Once that T-shirt becomes wet, it only has an SPF of four. So T-shirts really, in of themselves, don't provide a lot of sun protection, especially wet. But if you buy, again, uh, the SPF products, uh, they, they will protect even when wet. And if you buy a shirt that doesn't have it in there, I believe you can buy uh, detergent or separate SPF uh, detergent that you can put in your washer, and it'll protect your clothes for several washings. It'll give you that sunscreen. Okay, so you should wear a wide brim hat. A lot of people wear just visors or baseball caps, but you're missing your ears to the back of your head. So that's why we recommend the broad brim hats. And then when you're at the beach net, it's preferable to stay under umbrella, but don't think that protects you 100%. It doesn't, yes, because uh, you can get reflective rays back. So uh, definitely always want to wear sunscreen, even under an umbrella. And also, like they said here, concrete can reflect uh, light. And then cloudy days. Um, you may feel cooler, but you're also still getting the sun rays, unfortunately. You just don't see them as visible because you don't have the hot sun beating on you. So definitely wear your sunscreen even on cloudy days because you still can burn. Okay, so this talks more about the UV rays, UVA. UVA is uh, pretty much 95% of the light that comes through. And as you can see, it goes all the way down into the bottom of the dermis. So it could affect elastin and collagen. So that'll um, cause you to have more wrinkles, the leathery skin, the thick skin, the non-elastic skin. Um, not tied to skin cancer as much, but it does affect the DNA, so theoretically could cause uh, some of the skin cancers. And it will pass through your glass windshield and windows. So that's why it's important, even if you're indoors or just driving around, that you wear sunscreen, especially on your arms, because uh, the, the UV ray will come through your uh, windows and all your glass products, even if they're coated, it'll come through. Okay, so UVB. Uh, that's the one that can cause skin cancer. That's the one that's tanning you at the epidermal level. And that can be protected through glass and things like that. But as you can see, so you have to protect against both rays of, um, of the UV spectrum. Now this goes into the SPF a little bit further. So you can see low has less, uh, it's about 2 to 10, it has less protection. 40 and higher is high, but remember I said about 40 and higher really don't get much more benefit with it. 
I've forgotten, but I think it has something to do with how long you can be in the sun uh, before you burn. This is what it indicates, basically. So it definitely reapplies. You can see it's a little dark, but if it's a windy day, if you're sweating, if you rub it off, um, if you're at high altitudes, close to the equator, if you're on a cruise, you want to reapply frequently. Okay, now we're going to go to summer, or, or excuse me, water safety. So basically, uh, a lot of this is common sense, but just to reiterate, especially for your grandkids, great-grandkids, if you're watching them this summer, uh, don't ever want to swim alone, and never swim when you're exhausted or tired or on, have alcohol in your system, because your uh, ability, mental capacity won't be there. Don't swim or dive in unfamiliar waters. Um, around here, we don't have to worry about sharks too much, but uh, shallow areas, so you, you probably always hear about the spinal injuries from um, diving into shallow areas, so you always have to watch the kids about that. Avoid the rough ocean currents. This happened to us. We were down in Siesta Key last week, and they had a tropical depression go through and turn into a storm, and the current was really bad. They put up the red flags, and we tried to swim a little bit, but the riptide would, would pull you through back in so easily. You could be an excellent swimmer and still be pulled back in. So that's why you always want to obey the rules. You know, fall, if the flag's out, try to avoid going in the surf, especially the little kids. If for some reason uh, you ever do get a rip current, they always say swim with the current. Go with the current and then try to get back out. Don't swim against the current because you'll get exhausted. And then always wear a personal flotation device or have it with you on you, you know, in your lap if on a boat. And of course with boating, you know, try not to drink. And definitely don't operate a boat when you're on the boat. Um, and observe all the warning signs, as I said before. So avoid uh, swallowing water. I don't think any problem with you guys here, but you know, you probably have great grandkids that can do this. My kids do it all the time and they get sick. Uh, if they have diarrhea, definitely don't take your grandkids into the water. Um, the diarrhea is considered, uh, you know, you could contaminate the water and get others sick. So, and, and then of course, the diaper age kids need to be in swim diapers or plastic diapers too. And that's if they're not having diarrhea. And then take the kids to the bathroom frequently. And then uh, you should shower afterwards because uh, you first you want to get the chlorine off. But if there's any bacteria, viruses, uh, parasites in the water, then you might be able to wash it off with soap and water. As you can see, it's a bad case of swimmer's itch there. Uh, has anybody ever had swimmer's itch? No, yeah, I haven't even, thank God. But I see it you know, a few times in the summer for my patients. Um, it's basically exposure to microscopic bugs, and they don't harm you, but a lot of people are very sensitive to them, and they might get under the skin or uh, some of the venom will cause an allergic reaction like this. So basically, just keep the area cool. You can do baking soda, water mix, paste. You can do oatmeal baths, um, steroid cream. Just don't scratch because that will scar the skin or cause infection. But even though it looks nasty, it's not harmful, and you can't spread it to other people. Okay, vehicle safety. Um, oh, unfortunately, we see this a lot in the summer, and you hear, unfortunately, fatalities. It's so sad because it's preventable, but people leaving pets and kids in cars. Uh, you don't even want to leave them in with a, the uh, air conditioning on. If you can't take them inside, you know, or just don't take them out, it's the best way to, to protect the animals and kids. But uh, it, it's just amazing how hot the car can get, even if the windows are cracked. So definitely, there's no other discussion about it. I just wouldn't do it. Just don't take them with you. And then a reminder to your family, if any of them ride motorcycles or ATVs, uh, things like that, they should have helmets on. It's not a requirement in Florida for motorcycles over 18, but we really recommend that you, you, know, some, you always wear helmets. Try to avoid cell phones when driving. They've done studies more recently with Bluetooth or hands-free devices that even those still distract. So we ask that no you know, talking on the phone while driving because it is distracting. Okay, and then at home, make sure you inspect your playgrounds uh, when you take kids there to make sure there's no bees, wasp nests, black widows, uh, broken parts, uh, sharp objects, things like that. Pools should be fenced in. That's a state requirement now, and it's wonderful. I think it's protected a lot of kids. But for the grandparents, great-grandparents here, you definitely want to make sure you have a fence around your pool when you have kids come over because that will help. I mean, you still want to keep an eye on the kids all the time, but... That's one safeguard that's uh, 
you, it's ir irreplaceable. It's just awesome to have. And of course, um, we hear all the time about food poisoning summer when you're out in picnics and in the hot uh, air and you know mayonnaise being out. But now we're finding out that's not just your mayonnaise products or dairy products that are spoiling. It's your uh, produce, your lettuce. We're finding out there's a lot of contaminants and bacteria on our lettuce. So you got to make sure that whoever prepared the food wash the uh, lettuce, the leafy vegetables off very well because you can get E. coli and a lot of the bacteria from them. So it's really important. Now there are um, rules like how long you keep something out, under what conditions, like is it on ice or is it on the table or is it in the refrigerator. So if you can, if you have access to a computer, just uh, enter it in the search engine to find out exactly because um, it, there's a lot of uh, rules to it about how long something's kept out and what temperature and uh, what product it is. Also for cooking your meat, same thing. Each meat has a different temperature grade and all that. So if somebody's grilling your hamburger or um, fish or whatever, you know, you want to make sure it reaches those temperatures. So again, just enter it in the search engine and it'll tell you what to look for. Also keep a first aid kit at home and I'd also recommend your car. That's really good in case you get uh, cut by something, stung, or um, you know, just have a, a sunburn, something to treat yourself with. Also, power tools and that. Unfortunately, we had a case, as you remember, in Tampa where a little girl got run over by a, a lawnmower and was amputated. Um, so we've got to be really careful with our animals, our young kids. Uh, also, if you're mowing, to wear goggles and pants, things like that, so you don't get hit by rocks and stones. Keep gasoline containers outside the home this time of year with the grilling and the filling of the motors for the you know, ATVs or the um, wave runners, things like that. You want to be very careful with your gas material. Keep it in a safe container. Keep it outside the house. Make sure there's no leakage, things like that. Definitely no smoking <laughs> with that thing, with those things. And keep kids away from the barbecues, so in case there's flash flame or any uh, leaking of propane, things like that, that they're not exposed to that. Okay, and for uh, bicycling, uh, we really recommend helmets no matter what. Uh, under 16, it's mandatory. Over 16, it's optional. But again, like with the motorcycles, we would really rather you wear a helmet because you never know where you could fall off and hit your head. Also, scooters and skating because uh, in them themselves, they're very unstable um, assistive, assistive devices. So you want to wear uh, elbow, knee pads, things like that too. So we recommend that for your kids. We you go hiking, um, always let others know carry your cell phone, have a GPS on there, a map, and then make sure you pack additional clothes in case you fall in a creek or it starts raining, things like that, or you start getting cold, like if you're up in the mountains. Down here, it wouldn't be a problem, but up in the mountains, it might get cold quickly. And to bring your insect repellent, uh, especially with DEET, because uh, some of the mosquitoes still carry diseases like encephalitis and uh, other bad things. So. Okay, first aid, again, I would definitely learn CPR if you have not done that. Uh, there's basic life-saving classes you can take here at the hospital. You never know. It's always like life insurance. You don't want to use it, but, you know, it's available. So uh, it definitely would be worth it, especially with having kids around. Keep allergy kits around if you know people that have allergies, um, especially as people are highly allergic. We recommend EpiPens, so make sure that the family has EpiPen available especially if you have family visiting and you know you have a kid that's highly allergic like to nuts or bee stings, you know, you might want to make sure you, you have those available and some Benadryl. Okay, that ends our uh, discussion. I know it was uh, sort of brief, but I like to leave it open to you to bring up issues, questions, things like that. Yeah, I know some um, summer issue questions or Anything like that? Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, okay. Always read your medication before you go out in the sun, even if you do wear sunscreen. I had no clue that my vertigo medication um, would be sensitive to the sun. Okay. So I got out in the sun, I had sunscreen on, and I got more sun than I, ne than I ever, ever did. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. So then I read over it and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. who would have ever thought? I mean, I know antibiotics and some uh -huh. other things, but yeah, check it out before you go boating yeah. or fishing. We see a lot of rashes in the summer and that's one of them is the photodermatitis from uh, medication and sun reaction.
So it happens a lot. Luckily, it's usually benign, not harmful. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Swimmers itch or whatever it's called. Yeah. Have you seen cases of that here? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, especially if people go to the rivers. Yeah, the rivers mostly. Yeah. And then uh, uh, a couple stingrays, you know, sometimes they'll make it back here from the beach and that and have stingray, uh, the venom cause a reaction. So that can happen. Good question. And then hot tubs too, but this time of year most people aren't in hot tubs, but you can get a bad fibrocolitis and that, and that's when you want antibiotics for that. That'd be more in the winter time. Yeah, some hot tubs can be contaminated with the bacteria. Even chlorinated? Yeah, sometimes if it's not done properly. Yeah. But if it's proper and clean, yeah, it should be an issue. Does the spray t um, sunscreen work as well as the lotion? Do you have a preference of that? Uh, good question there, too. It, it's just a, mostly the preference, but you're right. The spray is very convenient, but uh, wind can disperse it, so you have to spray in an area where you don't have wind uh, doing that. And then also, um, because it um, dries so quickly and it's not visible, you don't know if you hit all your areas. Because that's how me too, my family and I, you know, you get burnt in certain patches and you realize you didn't. Yeah, and, and we tend not to do as uh, much uh, the uh, quantity on the skin with a spray. So it's very convenient and nice and less messy, but there's also some drawbacks. The lotion is messy, but you, you can see it go on and you can, uh, you know, know your coverage is more thorough. And also about that, make sure you're using enough. They say that most of us do not use enough lotion or spray, that you should use probably a shot glass for like your face and then a couple for um, quarters of your body. So like uh, probably three shot glasses for here and then two for your legs and two for your arms and all that. So it's a lot. You'll be going through a lot of sunscreen. Um, question. Whenever, like women, when they shave, sometimes, like my granddaughter, if she shaves before she goes into the water, she'll break out with, like, little. Yes. So is there something she can put on to prevent that from happening? Uh, that's a good question. That happens a lot of women. Yeah, it, it's probably best not to shave the day you go into the ocean or the pool. If you do, just maybe some um, hypoallergenic lotion, like a, a Cetaphil or Eucerin may help soothe it a little bit. It's just because when you shave, you nick superficial cuts in your skin, so chlorine or the salt water will aggravate it. And plus, you could also get infection easier. So it's actually a hygienic thing. Probably it's not good to shave the day of going in somewhere. So, yeah. I did tell her that, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. They don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I have a stepdaughter, 18. She, yeah, they, they don't. And Dr. Alfred, yeah. what do you recommend for a sunburn besides not getting it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, just the aloe gels, and they have lidocaine in them, so uh, you can use those. They're all over the place now. And then um, just keep it hydrated and keep the lotion on and try to avoid sun exposure until it heals. And if it's very severe, you would have to see a provider because you might need an antiseptic ointment or something further. Because uh, some birds can get really bad and infected, but most of the time people can handle them on their home at home with the uh, aloe again, the lidocaine, um, might ice it a little bit, might soothe it a little. Are there anything else in those after suns besides the lidocaine that, that could be a problem? I know a couple times mm -hmm. um, we've been semi burnt and we ended up with blisters from oh, really? lidocaine Ooh. and stuff. Wow! You know, I'm, I'm just thinking maybe there's some type of chemical. Be that they always put different preservatives, additives to them. Again, so sort of like with the sunscreen issue, you would have to find when you look at the ingredients for one with a less amount of ingredients. Maybe you have to search uh, more homeopathic or hypoallergenic type of products to use for afterburn. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what ingredient may be causing that reaction. Lidocaine in and of itself shouldn't, but the vehicle it's in may be causing it. But lidocaine too, just remember, in excess can cause issues because it is absorbed into your bloodstream. And uh, any time with lidocaine, you don't want to do too much. So you don't want to put like bottles on every day. I think that, you know, three or four times a day application for the first two days and then just occasional after that is best. Usually it's just a one time. Yeah, that's what most of us do this. Yeah, it's just to take off the sting. And then after a day, your skin's quick at repairing itself. So it's really good. You have a question? Yeah. The, the UA and the UV, uh, uh, are they equal in their capability of? Uh, doing your skin damage. Yeah, sort of like what I talked about before. Um, they do different things. The UVA goes very deep in the dermis, so it's very destructive at the base layer. And then UV 
B is more superficial. Um, so I guess the B is the one that's going to cause you the more problems with certain skin cancers and things like that. So it's very important to block B, but you also want to block A. So I guess the answer to your question is block it all. <laughs> that way you'd be safest because they both interact with your DNA. They alter your cells. And anytime you alter your cells, you run the risk of cancer. I've had quite a few of those squamous. Yes. And uh, is, isn't there a, a, a blood or a cells uh, that are uh, the, the melanin or something like that that the, aren't they the ones that are really go down deeper into your skin, right? And uh, to that cell area, and that's when you come up with melanoma. So the UVA would probably tend to probably cause more of the melanomas, but UVB probably also, if I read the literature more, would say that B would cause it too. Melanoma tends to go in, uh, deep in the dermis and go into your bloodstream, lymphatics, if not caught in time, and that's why it's so deadly. And then you always have to be surveillanced for reoccurrence because you think you might have removed it with a biopsy or excision, but it can spread to your, in your body already. Do, uh, just one or the other of those, do they know the, which one causes the squamous? Squamous probably UVB because it's superficial and squamous is superficial. But again, you want to block both. So I don't really want to get into A versus B and their distinct properties. I'd rather you just block both because that way you're safer. Yeah, I don't know a proper analogy to do for that. Um, I guess it's like with uh, everybody understands being wanting to lose weight. And they always say, oh, no sugar. And then some people say, no fat. Well, you really want to cut back on both. You don't want a lot of sugar. You don't want a lot of fat. So same thing with skin cancer prevention. You don't want a lot of UVA. You don't want a lot of UVB. You want to keep it away from you. So does that sort of help or no? Yeah. And I really don't think anymore you're going to find products that say UVA only, UVB only. I don't think you can piecemeal what kind of protection you want. It's all grouped together now. Well, the dermatologist told me that just because I never had a melanoma, in saying that all mine had been squamous up to that point in time, and I was curious why I kept getting the same kind all the time. And uh, mm -hmm. he said, well, just because you always had that is like saying you could get melanoma to it. Right. And I never, ever, ever had a basil. That's I good. didn't start with basil. And yeah. I probably had at least a dozen of them. Yeah. The uh, skin cancers, unfortunately, you can get none, all, some, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes there's a genetic component to it, especially with melanoma. Uh, a lot of times, though, it is related to the amount of exposure you've had since childhood up to your present day of age, how many burns you've had, uh, things like that. And uh, squamous is the most common, easily is treated. So obviously, most of us are going to have more squamous. And then your basal, and then your melanoma is the worst. So. Good question or statements here. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay.